Okay, yeah, so what I wanted to do today in um, uh, the 15 or 20 minutes that I'm going to uh, do it for is um, just kind of give an overview of some of the uh, key points about uh, this area of legal highs or novel psychoactive substances, which I'll start by defining. Uh, and I've mixed them up in the title and called them novel highs. You could just call them new drugs, as we'll see. Um, but um, I, I do um, training courses on this. Uh, and so it's a kind of condensation of a lot of points I make over one day training courses. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. And um, for people who want a lot more, um, you'll be able to download this uh, later, um, I think, from the Hit Hot Topics website and I think uh, YouTube as well. And if you want it sooner, you can email me. Uh, my email will be at the end and uh, I'll, I'll send it you as well. And I'll just go over some key points now. Okay, then uh, I'll start off by looking at some definitions of what we mean by legal highs and novel psychoactive substances, which are kind of used interchangeably, but there is a difference. Uh, and then I'll look at the main types, just to make sure everyone's up to date on that, but mainly by their source and their effects. Um, might not be time to have a look at the legal responses, so I might have to skip that, but you can download and uh, look at that uh, as well, and some of the other talks I've done on my website and other places online. There's more details about legal responses, if I don't have time to cover that. Uh, and then, more importantly, look at some of the recent uh, and notable research that's been done uh, around uh, how many people are using uh, legal highs, uh, what the main trends and uh, other issues are at the moment, and then round up with some conclusions about why I think this has changed the game, uh, basically, for both the Misuse of Drugs Act and drug laws and, and uh, other aspects of how we deal with uh, drug use. Uh, legal highs have kind of changed um, how we need to deal with this issue a bit. Uh, firstly, then, what do we mean by legal highs? Well, they're chemicals which alter the normal functioning of the brain, like all drugs, and they thus produce changes in our experience and behaviour, uh, more commonly known as a high or a buzz these days. Uh, that would fit all drugs, and what makes them legal highs is that they're chemicals which aren't controlled by our Misuse of Drugs Act in the UK. They're not licensed for legal use, like alcohol and tobacco are, um, and they're not advertised and sold, and therefore not regulated as a medicine under the Medicines Act, and that's... Uh, a key issue, as we'll see in the next couple of slides. Uh, and a lot of uh, people who define legal highs also add that they mimic the effects of popular controlled drugs. Um, but since they mimic all of them, it's hardly worth saying. Um, so a legal high is basically a substance which isn't legally regulated um, by any of our laws, particularly the Medicines Act. And so a more accurate term would be legal loophole drugs, but I don't think it's going to catch on. Uh, now, we've also seen a move over towards using this term novel psychoactive substances. And over the last few years, uh, this term legal high has become replaced by MPS for short, uh, because if and when possession of trafficking of a particular new drug is prohibited by the government, it literally ceases to be a legal high if it's illegal. Follow that. So when we use the term novel psychoactive substances or MPS, it allows us to avoid the confusion which currently exists into, in relation to drugs like methadrone, meow, or MCAT which was banned uh, in April 2010, but it's still referred to as a legal high, um, particularly by the mass media, uh, but also other sources. So these terms are used in a confusing way, but you can see that there is a kind of difference. Uh, it could also be argued that labels like new drugs or novel highs are kind of enough for many purposes, but academics like the longer term, so that's why they're using MPS. Uh, so in short, legal highs are uncontrolled, but they can be new drugs, like 6-APB, just an example, or older drugs, like nitrous oxide, which I'm going to make a point about, uh, whereas novel psychoactive substances are new, but they can be uncontrolled, like 6-APB again, or they can be controlled, like methadrone. So there you go, there's the difference. Uh, so what's this legal loophole, then, uh, that's used by these new drugs? Uh, well, head shops and online retailers of legal highs, or MPS, get around this UK Medicines Act by stating that their products are not for human consumption, which of course they are, but that's how they do it. So by definition, they're saying they're not a medical drug, uh, therefore they can sell them to you um, for other purposes without violating those laws. Uh, another problem is that no tests or trials are then required like they would be with medicines. Uh, and instead, the product packaging typically contains a, a cross or a crossbones as a sign of toxicity and a warning that you shouldn't consume the substance, which is what you're buying it for. Uh, and they use euphemisms which we're all familiar with now, like bath salts, pong cleaner, room odorizer, incense, cream dispenser refills, as we'll see, and also with vaguer descriptions like souvenirs and research chemicals for some of them. And the packaging also typically states 
not that's for sale to adults only, uh, over 18s. Uh, so yeah, there's two main sources of uh, legal highs, unless you buy them off uh, dealers in a club or somewhere else, who are selling them second hand. Uh, and if you go out of here through the front and down Bold Street, on the left, you'll see Dr. Herman's, which shuts at about 5.30 if you want to get down there. Um, <laughs> Someone had just broke the window in that photo. It doesn't usually look like that. And they, they sell legal highs and, and drug-related paraphernalia and other literature. Uh, and that's one of the big chain stores of uh, legal high stores in, in the UK. Dr. Herman's in Manchester and other cities and towns around the country. So there's other chains and independent uh, retailers too. Uh, but also, and I think a lot of people are now turning to, especially the uh, younger generation and internet savvy people, are turning to these websites. Uh, Megachems is a a new name for four uh, legal high or MPS websites which have all just joined together. Um, and as you can see, research chemicals, um, which are mainly stimulants and hallucinogens, are the kind of main things that are being sold on these websites and in head shops. Uh, uh, but they're also now moving into other areas like benzodiazepines, as we've just heard from some previous speakers, atizolam, fluomazepam and diclazepam, uh, three that are sold on. Uh, this website. So it started off um, uh, certainly in the last three or four years with stimulants and hallucinogens being the main types of uh, legal highs or MPS. Now we're seeing sedatives like benzos and, as we'll see in a moment, other drugs and also cannabinoids, uh, which I'll come to in a moment. Uh, just to give you some facts and figures, this is um, from the EMCDDA early warning system in, uh, for January to March 2013. They looked at trends in the number of new um, drugs being marketed in Europe, and you can see that uh, it was 13 uh, in 2008, and it's gone up every year up to 2012 when there was 73, and I think it's even higher this year, um, but an official figure won't be available until the end of the year, of course. And um, 50 of these 73 new M MPSs in 2012 were synthetic cannabinoid products, which I'll come to. Um, there's also some figures. Um, from EMCDDA and Europol in 2012, showing trends in number of new um, NPS websites. And again, January 2010, there were 170, and it went up. So by January in 2012, there were 690 uh, of these websites uh, counted by these European bodies. And some Google results, um, there are some references in the uh, little box below these in the presentation, if you download it. Uh, and the Google results in August 2012 showed that the phrase, buy legal highs, produced 2.74 million results, was by research chemicals, produced 6.91 million results, which would take a bit of time to go through, wouldn't it? Uh, so what are the main problems with these sales of uh, legal highs and NPS? Uh, well, head shops and websites can't give out information about safer use of the drugs they sell. That's one problem, because if they did so, they'd be breaking the Medicines Act. So the only ways around that are for drug agencies to give out information, which we've seen today hit, and other agencies have started producing leaflets on these. Uh, there's also information online, uh, and it can be got through other sources too, but it can't be got at point of sale, which is a real problem. As I mentioned, there's no testing or trials of the risks and harms of these new drugs uh, because of this uh, legal loophole, and also there's no guarantee that different batches of the same product will contain the same dose of the drug, or even the same drug, and I'll show you a study if there's time, which um, makes this clearer. There's also a huge variety of these new drugs available with different chemical names, trade names and slang names and this makes um, uh, drugs, uh, the research work very difficult as well as very difficult for drug services and health services to know what response to take to people coming in um, with problems uh, related to these new drugs. It's not always clear from the names they use what they're taking and even if you know what they're taking it you don't know what drugs in it from one week to the next or from one product to the next with the same name. Um, what are the main types of legal high then at the moment? Well, based on the uh, British Crime Survey, or as it's now called, um, the Crime Survey of England and Wales, uh, but using their main indicator, which is prevalence of use in the last 12 months amongst young adults in the latest survey, 2012-13, what are the most popular legal highs in this survey? One of our you know, best surveys of a random sample of the population. And what are the most popular new drugs amongst those banned since 2005, which would be more the novel psychoactive drug um, heading? Um, well, unlike um, a lot of these leaflets uh, that are coming out now are very good. You know, we've got these new ones from HIT. Uh, Lifeline have done some too. The Analyphy Project. Someone called Frank. I haven't got his last name. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, Lifeline have produced this little one, uh, and they've also, Lifeline have just produced the big blue book of drugs, which is worth having just to see the Mona Lisa shooting up drugs on the front. And also, since we're all promoting our books today, Tripology by me, that's really old, I haven't got a new one. Um, but as you can see, um, unlike um, uh, we, we gather from the mass media or other sources, the British Crime Survey found that it's nitrous oxide, uh, which is the most popular legal high. 6% said they'd used that in the last year amongst young adults. And of all the drugs used, traditional and new drugs, nitrous oxide was the second most popular drug in the latest survey. After cannabis, um, poppers were seventh, salvia were eighth under the heading of legal highs. And then under NPS bans since 2005, we've got methadrone ranked fifth, ketamine ninth, magic mushrooms uh, tenth, which were a legal high until 2005. Um, Nitrous oxide, then, um, as, uh, is the most popular legal high, according to surveys, as well as the British, other surveys, as well as the British Crime Survey, and these little cream dispenser refills. It can it also be got in other forms. Um, most people use them in this way, known as whippets. And so you buy these little um, boxes of um, nitrous oxide capsules like this, which are supposed to go in cream dispenser refills, and you put them in the cream dispenser refill without the cream, as shown on the box, that goes on your breasts. Um, you don't put that in the, uh, in the machine. And then you fill it up with gas. Don't inhale it directly because it will freeze your throat and it fills up the balloon and then you inhale it from the balloon and it makes you laugh. And um, you also have a eureka experience sometimes which makes you think you've had a brilliant idea without actually knowing what it is. But it's very amusing, it makes people laugh. Uh, but it's, it's not very harmful compared to some of the other research chemicals that are now being sold. So it's nitrous oxide that does appear to be the most popular legal high, not all these research chemicals that are also being used. Uh, and it's also the second most popular survey, as we saw in the British Crime Survey. Yet yeah, it doesn't get very much attention from the mass media. Uh, its coverage by a lot of educational publications is poor or missed, and there is some good harm reduction advice you can give about it. For instance, it depletes vitamin B12, so users need to know they need to take you know, B12 tablets if they're using nitrous oxide. You also need to sit down when you're taking it so you don't fall over, <laughs> seeing that happen. Uh, and there's relatively little research on nitrous oxide recently, at least uh, compared to these other <coughs> new drugs. Um, there's three main types of uh, novel psychoactive drug based on source. I'll just whittle through some of these. Um, herbal highs, which are plants mainly, or fungi. Synthetic highs, substances made by means of chemistry. Semi-synthetic if you start with natural drugs. And then there's these mixed herbal synthetic products, um, particularly um, these synthetic cannabinoids, which are soaked into herbal materials. There's also electronic highs, which I talked about at last year's um, Hot Topics conference, and you can get that on the Hot Topics website for last year. I don't want to go on about those today. Um, so herbal highs, some of the three of the most popular are CAT, um, which will be banned, or has been banned, but I don't think it comes into um, uh, being a full ban until January 2014, maybe. Um, that contains cathinone, a stimulant drug like amphetamine. Uh, the salvia divinorum, very hallucinogenic and uh, produces a short, you know, but very uh, hallucinogenic trip. And then kratom is another one which is a, contains a substance, uh, mitra, mitra, yeah, that substance. And it's uh, stimulant and opioid-like at the same time. It affects opioid receptors as well as having stimulant effects. So that's one to, to watch out. It's popular online. Uh, the synthetic highs are a ranges of wide powders and pills and capsules. And as Fiona and Perenza's research has shown, in a lot of areas, they just use a general name for these now, like bubble in some northwest areas. Um, and they're mainly stimulants or uh, trippy drugs. Uh, here's some common uh, novel psychoactive drugs or legal eyes at the moment, MDAI, 5IAI, they've all got long chemical names. Um, purple bombs are also very popular on a lot of websites, an ivory wave. Um, containing a drug that's just been controlled under a temporary class drug order, which means it's legal to possess but not to sell. Um, methadrone, of course, was a, one of the most popular ones that brought all this to the attention of the mass media. Meow and the other names down on the right there that uh, come for it. Lots of different names for this drug around the country. Uh, one of the main problems with it, and there are many problems with methadrone and similar stimulant new drugs like it, is that uh, when it's injected, and in many areas people are turning to inject it who've injected traditional drugs like amphetamine and heroin, and it can cause you know, major problems for veins and flesh, as we can see on this chap here, and that's in an article called The Untold Truth About Both Bath Salt Highs in the Journal of Plastic Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgery. These articles on novel drugs are scattered around a whole pile of uh, different journals. 
Um, more worryingly now, we're starting to see synthetic opioids, legal synthetic opioids being sold online. This one, bromophenyldimethylaminophenylethylcyclohexanol. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just say it again. Bromidol. Um, it's 500 times stronger than morphine. Um, you only need 400 mi uh, 40 micrograms to get high on it, so as, as a lot of the websites say, you need some pretty good scales to measure out that dose, or you're going to overdose its short-term effects and long-term effects, as you can see, are very similar to morphine and heroin. Um, it's sold at 99% purity. And some websites are starting to sell it in smaller amounts. Uh, uh, this one, VX Chem, sells you 500 grams for $3,500, which is just about £5 a gram. Uh, there's also these mixed herbal synthetic products, um, the synthetic cannabinoids, and first of all, uh, in two waves of banning these products, the government banned spice-type um, versions of these drugs. This year it's banned um, those in this kind of black mamba uh, group and other ones um, defined in certain chemical groups, uh, one of which was dupe, which was a originally a kind of fairly pleasant cannabis-like high. Now that chemical in dube has been banned this year. It now contains a much more horrible chemical, which is even worse than the original one, which you know causes 15 to 30 minute bad trips, basically. And uh, luckily, if you smoke it regularly, it, it, it eventually wears off and tolerance uh, to this, some of these things is rapid. So it comes on really strong at first, and then it stops having any effect. You leave it for three days and it comes on strong again. So it's kind of pretty troublesome for that reason. Um, with these new legal synthetic cannabinoids coming out now, we've banned the first two groups, so this is the cat and mouse game of legal highs. You ban one group or a couple of groups, as we've done in the UK, and another batch appears. And there are literally hundreds of these synthetic cannabinoids that have been investigated in the medical field as antidepressants and appetite boosters and things, and that's where legal high manufacturers get their ideas for making these things. Um, but again, as we see with methadone, these drugs do have real problems. The mass media started making them up at first, cried wolf about it, but now research is finding that some of these substances really do have problems. Uh, this study in uh, Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report um, uh, looked at 16 cases of acute kidney injury in, uh, in the USA uh, caused by some of these synthetic cannabinoids, particularly one called XLR11, uh, and they're two to three times more likely to, than cannabis to produce unpleasant uh, bodily effects like tachycardia and hypertension, five times more likely to produce hallucinations according to this study and with an increased risk of seizures. And as this study points out, no antidote exists, not at this stage. So if they take you to hospital, they just have to look after you in the best way they can. You know, there isn't a kind of naloxone type drug to, as an antidote for these things. There's a recent guide, so I can shut up about legal highs. <laughs> That's a really up-to-date one by Kevin Fleming on his website. Um, if you download this, you can click on that and go and see this very up-to-date recent guide covering, you know, dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of these new chemicals that are now available. Um, I'll just skip legal responses. Uh, but just to summarise some of the responses of marketers to these legal bans on these new drugs, when we ban these uh, legal highs, they continue to get sold in, sold in countries which haven't yet banned them. Uh, manufacturers then tweak the banned chemical, as I've said, to produce new legal versions with similar effects. Uh, they produce new uh, NPS altogether in unbanned groups. And another fourth problem is that banning them me means they often move into the illicit drug market like methadrone. This usually means you get a, a rise in price and adulterants and a fall in purity, which is harm maximization. Uh, and methadrone was banned in 2010, but it's still the fifth most popular last year drug for young adults in the British Crime Survey after four uh, other drugs, including cannabis, nitrous oxide, cocaine, and ecstasy. Um, some of the recent research then is the New Musical Express uh, just did a drug survey of 5,000 um, of its readers, I guess. Four in 10 said they tried legal highs, um, uh, but only 2.6% in the last year. And again, people aren't starting with these. As we can see, only 1.6% said they'd actually started off their drug use by using legal highs. So it's not like they're a gateway drug or anything. It's um, the, the drugs that people use after they've tried traditional drugs quite often, like cannabis and coke and ecstasy. And over half of the, this NME sample didn't think they should be banned. Uh, the Global Drug Survey, which we heard about earlier, um, Adam Winstock's um, survey, uh, also found um, in the, the most recent survey of 22,000 people online and in various magazines that 12% had stated they'd ever used them, 14% had used them at a drug or party or club without knowing what it was, which kind of brings us back to that bubble heading. People just think, 
you know, if it gets you high or makes you speedy, we'll take it. Uh, and about one in five had bought it online. And again, this survey found the most popular one was nitrous oxide. Uh, also, um, this study in um, uh, BMJ Open uh, found a number of uh, things, including um, uh, buying up 22 legal high products and finding a range of different um, drugs available in them. But most importantly, they found that about one in four of these products that they examined didn't actually contain the listed active ingredients, uh, which is really worrying. Another worrying thing is we're starting to see tablets being sold in clubs under the name of ecstasy. Uh, and this um, one reported by the Scottish Police Authority and reported in a tweet by Crew 2000 was a rock star ecstasy tablet which found 11 different drugs present in one tablet, including a range of traditional drugs and a range of um, legal highs or NPS like cathinones, methoxetamine and BZPs. So that's another worrying development. And also, they're mutating. Um, many in this study in Japan, um, many of the new NPS identified in this study included this uh, drug URB754, an endocannabinoid type drug, and another one, MABP for short, a cathinone or methadrone type drug. And what had happened was when these two drugs were mixed in a powder in a packet, the researchers found they actually interacted in the packet and produced a third unknown compound, which was another uh, a drug altogether, uh, and it was deduced to be an unexpected reaction between these other two drugs. So we can expect that to be happening uh, in other packets of these things too. And uh, just to finish off with a, a few uh, points about um, some of the harms, well, I think death is the major harm uh, for most of these things. And um, uh, although the mass media made a lot of noise about these things, killing hundreds of people o over the last few years, um, uh, the actual official statistics uh, for England and Wales show that the number of uh, deaths linked to novel psychoactive substances uh, was 25 in 2008, uh, but doubling to 52 in 2012. And the same in Scotland, it was zero in 2008, and then two, eight, nine, and 17 in 2012. So deaths from linked to legal highs are rising. Uh, so just to finish off then, why is it a game changer? Well, I think it's changed uh, the whole game in the drugs field uh, by partly because it's hugely expanded the number of psychoactive drugs. Um, it's sidestepped drug-related laws, as I've said, and as we do this, they're just rapidly replaced by new legal drugs. It's introduced new drug-related risks and harms, um, which I could talk about later. Uh, it's caught many drug services unprepared or untrained to deal with these things. And it also requires a harm reduction of approach more than a recovery approach, but the UK's primary drug strategy at the moment is recovery and as we heard earlier that's not always something appropriate for people um, using these drugs in, in clubs they're not ready for that at some stages um, just to finish off um, lifeline in um, the big blue book of drugs has basically made it clear that you know people who take these things are basically acting as free guinea pigs uh, for researchers by taking unknown substances and research has to ca catch up and see what what's happening to the brains and body organs of people who are doing these things um, oh yeah and last but not least i think um, as a lot of agencies are now realizing including the police in lincolnshire this week it's, it's probably very important to consult with people who are using these drugs and to get them on policy making and drug service groups because they know more about them uh, than most other people at the moment being uh, the front line for using these and it would be helpful to have the users of these drugs on uh, policy making and service groups uh, to find out more about what they're doing to people and why they take them and so on. Uh, as I say, if you want to see more details of that, there's lots of more studies in the appendices if you want to download it, which back up some of the things I've said. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, Russell. Brilliant. Um, we're going to...